Approximately 3 million years ago in the northern region of what today is Tanzania, the Gorongoro volcano became inactive. As its internal pressure diminished, so its immense central bulk caved in, creating the largest volcanic crater on our planet. This fertile ground, which as well as being covered in ash from surrounding volcanoes, also received a higher rainfall than that of other neighboring regions, soon giving rise to an array of flora. The conditions of this land, whereby the crater slopes protected it from the outside world, were perfect for new elephants, buffalo, flamingos, cranes and a whole host of other creatures. And the once uninhabited and desolate Gorongoro crater filled with life. Some 15 million years ago, long before man walked upon this planet, the Earth shook in the distant region of the African Rift. A gigantic one-kilometer-high fault crossed the north of what is now Tanzania to the Gol Mountain. The magma emerged from the bowels of the Earth, scorching its surface and filling the landscape with fire and desolation. What was once a vast plain now became a ripple of mountains and abrupt valleys and volcanoes dominated the skyline. Some of these reach great heights such as the Kilimanjaro or the Gorongoro, though the latter on becoming inactive eventually sank into itself, leaving only its lower slopes to hint at what was once its former glory. The landscape has radically changed since then and today the Gorongoro crater harbors numerous ecosystems. One of the most important of these is the Laraya Cassia forest, which occupies the volcano's southeastern internal slopes. Laraya is actually the Maasai word for the yellow barked acacia. The biological diversity within its interior makes the Gorongoro crater a unique and remarkable wildlife sanctuary. Next to the acacia forest, the wetlands, rivers and lakes remind us that at one time the bottom of the crater used to lie entirely below water. The permanence of these ecosystems, even in the dry system, has established a proliferation of species such as flamingos, pelicans or the immense hippopotamus. Global climatic change has brought with it reduced rainfall in the region. And evidence pointing at a drop in water table and aquifer levels means that the conservation of this fragile ecosystem is in danger. The rainy season has arrived. From November to May, the crater radically changes in appearance. The dry prairies turn from yellow to green, and herds of news, zebras, gazelles and buffalo come from the Serengeti in search of new pastures. The clouds shed their water, soaking the ground and replenishing aquifers, rivers, wetlands and lakes. It is a period of abundance.
During these months, it has been estimated that there are more than 25,000 large mammals in the crater, attracting, in turn, one of the highest concentrations of predatory animals in Africa. Lake Magadi is the only lake to retain water during the dry season. With a maximum depth never in excess of three meters, it is the ideal habitat for two of the crater's most characteristic birds, the greater flamingo and the lesser flamingo. Every year, thousands of these birds arrive in Gorongoro with the rains. Huge colonies of flamingos come to the lake where they sieve the water in search of algae and crustacea, their staple diet. At midday, the high humidity and evaporation levels caused by the heat become suffocating. The grand zebras nip each other while playing. The simple exercise plays an essential role in establishing and consolidating the social ties within the group. It is during the rainy season that the zebras give birth, as is the case of a large number of the crater's herbivores. Abundant pasture land considerably increases the probability of successfully raising the young. With shortages neither of food nor of water, the young zebras quickly develop the necessary physical strength and speed for surviving in the prairie. The great herds of gnus are also breeding, and almost as soon as they are born, the young will be able to follow their parents in the prairie. The proliferation of the newly born transforms the crater into a paradise for predators, some of which are themselves also in the process of rearing their young. The young jackal's mother can rest assured that there is enough food for the entire litter. For the young warthog, this is a time of fun and games in which danger does not seem to exist. Such a carefree attitude is compensated for by the mother who will take on the burden of worrying for her young as long as they depend on her. Gorongoro's largest predator, the lion, is too busy to be interested in the herbivores right now. A female is trying to attract his attention in order that he take note of her state. And, as so often happens, when he responds, she rejects him. The male seems to have lost interest but the female would not give up so easily. She starts to act again, showing herself to be receptive and submissive. He doesn't seem to be so keen to be humiliated this time. Nevertheless, he is once more roused into action and is again rejected. Finally, the female consents to being mounted. This torturous game of push and pull may well repeat itself every 20 minutes throughout the whole day.
the male black rhinoceros sprays his urine to mark out his territory. A female on heat has entered his territory and the male rushes towards her excited by her scent. Within the Gorongoro limits, this scene is becoming increasingly frequent. The shape of the crater allows for efficient vigilance against poachers and today its wildlife is generally considered to be safe, at least from this source of danger. The extensive prairies within the base of the crater are home to another of Gorongoro's herbivores, the Cape Buffalo. These herds, comprised of as many as 2,000 head of buffalo, are led by an old female, while the males protect the rear guard. The buffalo's poor hearing and eyesight mean it has to depend on its acute sense of smell to detect the presence of enemies. They raise their heads continuously in order to pick up the messages carried through the air to their nostrils. Despite the group's painstaking vigilance, there are actually very few predators that offer them any serious threat. The Cape Buffalo is really a stretch on the limits of the lion's hunting abilities. Its size and strength make it a very dangerous animal, and no predator would choose to attack one if it had another smaller choice of prey. In the rainy season, however, these huge herds harbor many calves amongst their numbers, and these calves are indeed vulnerable. It is the lionesses that do the hunting, but on this occasion they don't seem too interested. Nevertheless, the buffaloes remain on guard. This time, it is a male lion that has taken the initiative. Although his efforts have been rewarded this time, only 8% of a single lion's hunting results in success. This percentage increases to 33% in group hunts. Three families of lions live in Gorongoro. Their interaction with lion populations from the outside is almost non-existent and inbreeding is frequent. Genetic diversity has reduced by 40% compared to that in the neighboring Serengeti and the reduction in the number of cubs in each litter is beginning to seem indicative of an increasing weakness of the species. In the world of birds, hunters and the hunted also live side by side and the abdim stork has its airborne version of the lion to contend with, the eagle. A rapacious eagle has captured a young stork. Once the prey has become overcome, the eagle has to eat as quickly as possible. On the ground, the eagle is vulnerable and may be seen and attacked by other predators. Having satisfied his appetite, the eagle will seek the protection of the trees and will even leave his catch behind if it is too difficult to take it with him. The monotony of the vast open plains of the savanna is only broken by a handful of acacias used as watchtowers by leopards and birds of prey. 
In the southeast of the crater, however, the landscape is occupied by the Larai forest. The forest's protective acacias are home to an enormous variety of fauna. As well as offering refuge from predators, the forest also offers a permanent supply of food. Amongst the many creatures inhabiting the forest are the two species of primates to be found in Gorongoro. The baboons cover the entire forest in search of food and do not usually climb the trees except in order to escape their enemies or to sleep. They are usually to be found in groups of between 30 and 100 individuals which are governed by a complex social organization. The fights among the young are frequent and help establish the pecking order amongst the males. A mere demonstration of strength is usually enough to convince the weaker contender to admit defeat and such fights rarely lead to bloodshed. The young are watched over and protected by the whole group. Such diligent vigilance stems from the fact that the female baboons are not fertile until the age of four, and also because they feed their young for a long period of time, thus spacing out the birth rate. This puts a premium on keeping infant mortality to an absolute minimum. The ververt monkeys prefer the more open areas of the forest where they feed on fruit, bulbs and roots. As opposed to the baboons, the small monkeys' only possible form of defense is escape, and they are attacked by both land predators and birds of prey who do not hesitate in robbing them of their food. Permanently on the alert while they eat, their acute hearing enables them to locate the kite even before it's visible. The powerful talons of these birds are a sufficiently convincing argument against fighting to keep the food. The best thing is to leave them to it and to run for cover. Today, the Larais forest's ecosystem is in jeopardy. Climatic change has brought with it a shift in the water table and aquifer levels, and the acacias are dying of thirst. Furthermore, a formidable enemy that feeds on young leaves and bark has joined in the process of destruction. The African elephant, which is born at 100 kilos, can end up weighing as much as 6 tons as an adult consuming some 300 kilos of food a day. In the dry season, 70% of its dietary need is satisfied by trees, an excessive demand upon the withering Larai forest. Only adult male elephants live in Gorongoro, the crater lacking sufficient vegetation to feed the large herds made up of females and their offspring. The elephants go to the nearby rivers and pools for their mud baths. Next to them, the hippopotamus also enjoys the permanent year-long presence of water here, a rare luxury indeed. Bathing is open to all and the buffalo also decides to join in the fun. Another species that goes back a long way here in the crater and which is impervious to the daily struggles between predators and prey is man. Some 10,000 years ago, the so-called Stone Bowl people lived off these lands. Then came the Mblu and after them the Datoga. <laughs> 
The Maasai, who are the current inhabitants of the crater, expel the Datoga and maintain numerous quarrels with these people even today. They refer to the Datoga as the strong enemy. In 1956, the then national park of Gorongoro, which fell within the Serengeti, was the cause of polemic after agriculture and farming were banned within its limits. The Maasai inhabitants were not prepared to renounce their historic rights and the Tanzanian government eventually had to segregate Gorongoro from the national park, creating the so-called conservation zone with its own special management. Today, the Maasai can drive their cattle freely within the conservation zone. They are not allowed to cultivate the land, but the government sell them grain at a very reduced price, thus avoiding renewed protests. One may well suspect that the Maasai's domestic livestock would be in competition with the large herds of herbivores that inhabit the crater. However, the crater has enough grazing ground to feed both without creating difficulties, and therefore domestic livestock does not pose any threat to the conservation of the area. The abundance of life and water in Gorongoro never failed to surprise visitors to the old volcano. The mountains that have so jealously guarded the secret of this crater, hiding it away and caring for its climate, have made it a unique enclave in Africa. Here we will not witness the amazing migration of news to be seen in the Serengeti, because the large bovid herds, the flamingos, the black rhinoceroses and the elephants enjoy a year-round bonanza without equal in the rest of East Africa. The days when the Gorongoro volcano spewed its furious rivers of burning lava from the bowels of the earth are well gone. And today, the crater, together with the Lengai volcano, the Maasai God's Mountain offers us a picture of a little piece of paradise.